a train that travels at 373 miles per hour without touching the tracks. In China, the route from Shanghai to the airport, 19 miles that would take 40 minutes by car, is covered in just seven minutes. In Japan, engineers are working on a system capable of connecting Tokyo and Osaka in just one hour. This technology is not science fiction, but is revolutionizing rail transport in several countries. Magnetic levitation trains, or simply maglev, represent an evolutionary leap in transportation. Unlike conventional trains, they don't depend on wheels or combustion engines. Instead, they use the force of magnetic fields to levitate and move. This technology eliminates friction with the tracks, allowing impressive speeds with lower energy consumption. Today, we will explore how this technology works, where it is being implemented, and what is the true potential of trains that float. The idea of using magnetism for transport is not new. In 1922, German engineer Hermann Kemper already proposed the concept of magnetic levitation for trains. He obtained the patent in 1934, but the technological limitations of the time prevented its practical development. It was only in the 1960s that the first prototypes began to emerge. Countries such as Germany, Japan, and the United States initiated a serious research on the subject. Japan, in particular, bet heavily on the technology with the Shinkansen Maglev project, which would later become the famous superconducting maglev. In 1984, England inaugurated the first commercial maglev at Birmingham Airport, a short line that operated until 1995. However, it was China that took the most significant step by inaugurating in 2004 the Shanghai Trans Rapid, the first high-speed maglev train for regular commercial use. The history of maglevs is marked by much research and some discontinued projects. Germany, for example, developed the Trans Rapid program for decades, but ended up abandoning it after a fatal accident in 2006 during a test. The United Kingdom and the USA also came to plan maglev lines that never materialized due to budgetary and political issues. Today, only China, South Korea, and Japan maintain operational maglev systems with speeds ranging from moderate 68 miles per hour on the urban line in Incheon, Korea, to the impressive 375 miles per hour achieved in tests by the Japanese SC Maglev. The operation of Maglev trains is based on two fundamental principles of physics, levitation and propulsion, both obtained through magnetism. There are two main magnetic levitation systems in use, EDS system, electrodynamic suspension. Used mainly in Japan, this system employs superconductors cooled to extremely low temperatures. When the train begins to move, the superconducting coils on board pass over coils installed on the track, generating a magnetic field that makes the train levitate. An interesting feature, these trains need conventional wheels for low speeds, as levitation only occurs above about 62 miles per hour. EMS system, electromagnetic suspension, adopted by the Shanghai Maglev in the German Trans Rapid projects, it works with conventional electromagnets. The train is attracted upward toward the track, maintaining a constant distance of approximately 15 millimeters. Sensors monitor this distance thousands of times per second, adjusting the electric current to maintain stable levitation. As for propulsion, maglevs use a system called linear motor, which is essentially a conventional electric motor unwound. Instead of rotating, it creates a moving magnetic field along the track, which pulls or pushes the train forward. Speed control is done by changing the frequency of the electric current that feeds these linear motors. To brake, the system reverses the polarity of the magnetic field, creating a force in the opposite direction. A crucial advantage, as there is no physical contact between the train and the track, there is no mechanical wear on the main parts of the system, resulting in less maintenance and longer service life compared to conventional trains. Maglev trains offer significant advantages over conventional rail systems. Speed, the current record holder is the Japanese SCM Maglev, which reached 375 miles per hour in tests. For comparison, the French TGV reaches a maximum of 199 miles per hour in commercial operation. This speed difference transforms three-hour journeys into routes of just one hour. Energy efficiency. At high speed, maglevs consume less energy per passenger mile than conventional trains as they eliminate wheel friction. The Shanghai system consumes approximately 20% less energy than a conventional high-speed train at the same speed. Lower maintenance. Without physical contact, there is no wear on tracks or wheels. The Shanghai Maglev has significantly lower maintenance costs than equivalent conventional rail systems. Silent operation. 
The absence of mechanical contact drastically reduces noise. At average speeds, a maglev produces about five decibels, less than a conventional train. Ability to climb steeper inclines. Maglevs can climb ramps with up to 10% incline, compared to 4% for conventional trains, allowing more flexible route layouts that adapt to the terrain. However, there are considerable challenges. Infrastructure cost. Building a maglev system costs between two to three times more than an equivalent conventional railway line. The planned Japanese SCA maglev line between Tokyo and Osaka has an estimated cost of $82 billion for 272 miles. Incompatibility with existing infrastructure. A maglev requires its own dedicated infrastructure, unable to use conventional rails. This makes integration with existing rail networks practically impossible. High energy consumption at low speeds. Paradoxically, while they are efficient at high speed, EMS systems consume a lot of energy to maintain levitation when stopped or at low speed. Effects of the magnetic field. Although studies do not indicate health risks, strong magnetic fields can interfere with sensitive electronic devices and pacemakers, requiring additional shielding. Currently, there are three maglev systems in commercial operation in the world. Shanghai Maglev, China. Inaugurated in 2004, it connects Pudong International Airport to Shanghai's financial district. With 19 miles in length, it reaches speeds of up to 268 miles per hour, making the journey only seven minutes. It uses German TransRapid technology and transports about 10,000 passengers daily. Linamo, Japan, a medium-speed urban system inaugurated in 2005 in Aichi. With six miles in length, it reaches speeds of up to 62 miles per hour. It is operated more as a subway line than a high-speed system. Incheon Airport Maglev, South Korea. Opened in 2016, it connects Incheon International Airport to Yongyu Metro Station. With four miles in length, it reaches speeds of 68 miles per hour. USA. Several proposals exist for lines in Washington, Baltimore, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and other routes, but none have advanced significantly due to funding issues. Europe. The European Union is studying the feasibility of maglev corridors to connect major urban centers as part of its sustainable transport strategy. Maglev trains transform not only transportation, but also the economy and environment. Regional development, connecting urban centers with drastically reduced travel times creates so-called economic corridors. In Japan, it is estimated that the Choshin Kansen will generate an economic impact of $87 billion in the connected regions through worker mobility and market access. Carbon emissions. Despite high electricity consumption, maglevs are significantly cleaner than planes or cars. A passenger on a maglev emits approximately 16 grams of CO2 per mile compared to 170 grams on a plane and 115 grams in an average car. If the electricity comes from renewable sources, this number can be even lower. Land use. Maglev lines require less space than highways of equivalent capacity. A two-way maglev line can transport up to 12,000 passengers per hour, equivalent to a six-lane highway, but occupying only one-third of the space. Reduction of congestion. By connecting cities less than an hour apart, maglevs can significantly reduce road traffic. It is estimated that the Shanghai maglev has avoided the emission of 175,000 tons of CO2 since its inauguration, by replacing car and plane trips. Social costs, a European Union study calculated that considering externalities such as pollution, accidents, and congestion, a maglev system has a social cost 60% lower than road transport and 35% lower than air transport for distances between 186 to 373 miles. The challenge persists in the high initial cost of implementation, which requires substantial government financing or innovative public-private partnerships. Japan, for example, is partially financing the Chuo Shinkansen with profits from the operation of the conventional rail network, a model that can be replicated in other countries. The future of magnetic levitation trains looks promising with several emerging trends. Expansion in Asia, China, Japan, and South Korea have already announced plans to significantly expand their maglev networks over the next 15 years. China, in particular, plans more than 1,243 miles of lines by 2035, including connections between major metropolises such as Shanghai Hangzhou and Guangzhou Shenzhen. Cost reduction. 
Innovations in materials and construction techniques are making maglev systems more accessible. The cost per mile has fallen approximately 30% in the last decade, and the trend is to continue decreasing as the technology matures. Urban integration, medium speed systems, 93 to 155 miles per hour, are being considered to connect metropolitan areas, airports, and distant suburbs, creating new concepts of regional mobility that replace both cars and conventional trains. Transnational networks. In Europe, studies are evaluating the feasibility of cross-border maglev corridors, potentially connecting Paris, London, Brussels in less than an hour of travel, creating a true European connected megacity. Integrated transport systems. The future will likely see maglevs as part of multimodal networks where various transport systems work in harmony. Imagine disembarking from a maglev and entering an autonomous vehicle that takes you to your final destination, all coordinated by intelligent systems. Despite uncertainties about large-scale economic viability, maglev technology represents a fundamental advance in how we think about high-speed land transport. The true potential, perhaps, lies in how this technology can transform concepts of distance, time, and regional connectivity. Magnetic levitation trains represent more than just a technological advance in transportation. They are a new paradigm of mobility, eliminating friction, a fundamental limitation of land transport for centuries. Maglevs open possibilities for speeds and efficiencies previously unimaginable. As the world faces growing challenges of urbanization, congestion, and climate change, technologies like maglev offer solutions that combine speed, capacity, and sustainability. Cities that were previously two hours apart can become part of the same economic region. Routes that required short flights, with all their inefficiencies and emissions, can be replaced by faster and cleaner land travel. The path to widespread adoption still faces significant obstacles of cost and technical complexity. However, history shows us that transformative technologies often overcome these challenges when their benefits become evident. The invisible tracks of magnetic levitation may well be the path through which the future of transportation will travel, not just floating on tracks, but propelling our society into a new era of connection and mobility.